Andy, first of all, how's the ankle? What are you doing to manage the problem? How bad is it playing through the pain? And are you stuck with it for the rest of the season? Four questions rolled into one. That's a good start. Get them all in at once, mate. Yeah. Um, no, look, uh, it's it's been better, to be fair. Um, just a bit stiff after matches, but it's something that I can manage with and something that I'm quite happy with. And, you know, it's slightly painful, but, um, you know, if you don't have any pain and in, in the amount of games we've played then, you know, I suppose maybe you're doing something wrong. So all the lads are managing stuff, and we're all good. So um, I feel good. I feel I feel fresh, and um, hopefully that continues. Obviously, it's been entertaining with the late goals that end up winning the games at the moment. But the boss has emphasised the need for clean sheets. What's the difference? What's compared to last season? Why do you think you are conceding those goals that possibly you weren't at this stage last season? It's a good it's a good question, and um, probably one we can't quite put our finger on and you know some of the goals we've conceded have been you know of high quality and some of them have been you know poor from us so it is, it is important that we get back to clean sheets because um, you know they, they're the ones that we're, we're good at and then it obviously lets the attackers go and do what they do and you know if you're conceding in games then we can't like you said we can't always rely on scoring late or you know coming from behind or whatever so you know it'd be nice to get back to the clean sheets and we believe that we're in a position that we can do that and hopefully that's starting tomorrow night. You're challenging on five fronts still. Obviously tomorrow could see you through to the knockout phase as group winners as well. I just wonder how you all feel as a group that you're effectively having to choose between the League Cup and the World Club Cup. I think for us it's, um, you know, when we look at it, it's sort of a compliment because we look back on it and it shows you you know, it's the reason we've got all these fronts is because we've been successful. And, you know, if you'd ask me, would I swap my Champions League winners medal for, you know, less fixtures, then absolutely not. So for me, the the fixtures are, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's credit to us and it's because of our success. And that's, that's something that we've got to look at. We've got to take the positives. Of course, not playing two games in 24 hours isn't, isn't ideal. And however the manager's going to deal with that, then that's fine. And, um, but, you know, we've got two big competitions and hopefully in the two squads that we put out, then both of them will be strong enough to try and see us through. But if not, then, you know, it's a consequence of, you know, not being able to fit enough games in. But we believe that any team that goes out is good enough to win the games. And, and that's what we've got to be aiming to do for the two ones, especially. Just to come back to your ankle, Andy, how are you managing it? What sort of things do you have to do or, or not do, I suppose? I think, the, I think the lads would say I've been in the treatment room probably too much, to be honest. I think the physios are um, sick of uh, treating me. But, um, look, it's just trying to get it going. It just takes a wee bit longer to, you know, loosen up in, in training. So maybe an extensive warm-up, um, you know, going out a wee bit earlier and things like that. So it just gets it going and then it feels OK. Once it gets going, it's, um, it's fine. It's just a bit of stiffness now, unfortunately, because... You know, not enough time to, to rest it, but like it's fine for me in games. It feels the best because you know you probably get half an hour to warm up instead of maybe 10, 15 minutes before training. So for me, it's it's all good, and in games it feels good, and, and that's all that matters for me. In terms of, do you sometimes have to be told to sort of pull it back again? Because I have a funny feeling you'd probably just play through and grin and bear it. So do. Yeah, look, sometimes um, you know, sometimes I do, and for me, I get. I get paid to play to play games and I get paid to train and I don't want to miss, you know, training set you know, all the lads are the same. We don't want to miss any training sessions, we don't want to miss any games and and sometimes, you know, you know, Genk at home's probably the best example for me. I wanted to play. Um but the manager had made his mind up that I was only going to play one of the Aston Villa or the Genk game and he chose Aston Villa. So um but it's all about managing, you know, happened with Mo at the weekend there, you know, Mo would have wanted to desperately to play, but for him it was best to you know, have an extra couple of days rest so we all want to play we all want to play games and but unfortunately sometimes it's not you know quite possible and sometimes people need to step in to tell you otherwise and you need to respect that I know you're confident in your own abilities and rightly so but is there almost a fear that by missing out someone can come in and, and take your place and you don't get back and is, does it, is that how it works or I'm not I'm not sure it's a fear but we know we have a top quality squad and everyone that's you know maybe not playing as much can easily come into that squad and um, you know not kick somebody out but you know come in and do a good job you know I think you see it from Alex Oxley Chamberlain perfect example he's came in and done fantastic and he's um, he's now you know he started against Palace and he's doing well for England so you know he's back and he's he's back pushing everyone so that's what our that's what our squad is like everyone's pushing each other and you know it's not quite a fear but it's you know something that you, for me I just don't want to miss games I like playing football and I like you know being out in the the big stage and 
um, you know, for me sitting up in the stands no good for me and it's no good for probably my heart and stuff like that. So I much prefer being on the pitch than off it. Okay. David? Andy, you've spoken about obviously the fixture backlog and the, the little injury that you're carrying at the moment. Does that give you a little bit of an extra incentive tomorrow to, to win, maybe knowing that the Salzburg game would, would effectively then be a dead rubber and that, that gives you an opportunity to make some changes possibly? Look, for, uh, for us, we don't think about, you know, the of course the Salzburg game, nothing could change if we do win tomorrow night, but we just think that we want to qualify for the last 16, you know, I don't think anyone's thinking, okay, win tomorrow and I don't need to go to Salzburg or win tomorrow and I don't need to play, and st- you know, we don't think like that, we just think that by winning tomorrow we have we have qualified with an extra game week to go, which is something that I've not done since we've been here, we've always went down to the last day, so that'd be nice to change that, and that's what our aim and goal is for for tomorrow, so we don't think ahead that far. And you know, if he does, you know, if we do have, you know, the manager does have the luxury where he can pick and choose who he wants to play in the game week six, then so be it. But that's down to us have done our job beforehand. So that's what we've got aim aim to do. Okay, Just pass it over to the gentleman at the back over there, please. We need the headphones. Mm. Uh, sono gli anicelli di Canale 21. Um, lei ha saputo delle difficoltà del Napoli, i suoi colleghi si sono rifiutati di andare in ritiro, sono stati, è cominciata una procedura di punizione da parte della società, che Napoli si aspetta di trovare domani sera faccia a faccia in campo? Una squadra provata psicologicamente oppure una squadra che magari da questa partita potrebbe trovare la forza per reagire? Lei in questa condizione come reagirebbe? For me, um, you know, I don't know, you know, I've not read much into what's been going on at Napoli, but it's obviously came to my attention um, the last couple of days. But for me, they have they have a job to do. They have a job to try and get into the last 16 of the Champions League and by getting a positive result tomorrow, they would take a massive step towards that. So, you know, for me, I think that's all forgotten about. And as a team, they will want to get to the last 16 because it helps them. And it's something they didn't manage to do last season. So I think they'll be aiming to do that. And um, obviously, we were the ones that stopped them from doing it last season. So they want to maybe to get slight bit of revenge. Um, but for me, it makes no difference. They'll be, they'll be all together and they'll want to win the game for themselves, more importantly, instead of what's going on around their club just now. OK, Neil. Andy, obviously, you know uh, Napoli quite well over the last couple of years. What what is it that makes them such a, a difficult team to face? Yeah, I think. Look, I think their their manager's a very good one. Um, tactically, and the way they play and the way they set up is is very good, and that's down to him. Um, but also, they have top quality players, and that's probably why you know the games against us have been so close. Um, and. But we know that we can cause anyone problems as well. And it's up to us to be at 100% tomorrow night. And if we do, then I believe we'll cause them problems. Whether it's enough remains to be seen. But I believe if we're at 100% and we're fine in all cylinders, then we can beat anyone. And, um, and Napoli are no different to that. So hopefully we can produce a performance that we can be proud of and, and we can hopefully get the three points. Because, like you said, we know the, we know what's at stake and we know what, what happens if we get the three points. So that's got to be our drive for tomorrow night. Okay, any final questions for Andy for yeah, Chris there? Hi, it's Andy. I don't know if you can hear me here. But um, this, this is a bit of an eye. 12 wins out of 13. That Liverpool actually aren't even hitting this stride yet. <laughs> what, did you buy into that idea that you're actually not even at your best yet and you're in this unbelievable position? Or? I, I don't... Um, <laughs> you know, I'm not really buying into it because... You know, we've found ways to win and we've been going right to the end and we've been putting in special performances um, in different ways. You know, some games we have fought against Man City and Tottenham, you know, we played, you know, unbelievable. But then against, say, for instance, Aston Villa or Crystal Palace, we had to dig deep and we didn't play our best, but we had to dig deep and find a way to win. So that's what we've been so good at. You know, in the Premier League, we've got, what, 37 points. So, you know, we can't we can't really moan about anything. Um, but we're a team that, you know, try to stride for perfection and that's not always possible. But, you know, if we keep striding towards that, then we'll get there. And, you know, if people say we haven't hit our heights, then, you know, hopefully that comes because that'll be that'll be nice when that happens. And hopefully, you know, like we've touched on with clean sheets and stuff, it'd be nice to get, you know, more of them and then, you know, hopefully get a couple more comfortable wins because, 
you know, the 90 minute winners aren't doing anything, you know, I don't think, I think the fans would love a, a game where they can just sit down for the last 10 minutes or whatever and, and enjoy it, but we've not quite managed to produce that in a while, so, you know, hopefully we can, can get back to doing that as well, because we want them to come enjoy it, not uh, be biting their nails right up to the 93rd and 94th minute.